All right, good afternoon. Hopefully everyone has had some coffee. If you haven't, I will try to be your coffee this afternoon and keep it lively, hopefully. Uh, so thank you for coming. This is the second peer learning session today. Who was at the morning peer learning session? With Indonesia, Uganda, and Costa Rica talking about sustainable infrastructure. And I was thinking all the while as an American citizen that our infrastructure continues to get a D or D minus from the American Society of Civil Engineers and why that's important. And it just flabbergasts me that we aren't able to build the public and political will to fund that several trillion dollars to fix our infrastructure. I come from Vermont. I flew down yesterday and my state is flooded. All you have to do is Google pictures of Google search pictures of Vermont flooding and you will see my state. I don't know if I'll be able to get home tomorrow because I drove my leaf to the airport and I, the roads are closed to my farm property. And I'm actually worried about my farm failing under the flooding because a lot of my fencing is too close to the newly flooded river that goes through my property. So I'm waiting for text messages, updates from my farming friends who are taking care of my rescue horses and cows and dogs to be like, hey, have the fence posts given in? And like, nope, they're still stable. Truly, like I could show you my phone like a half hour ago. Nope, the fen fence posts are still stable. So uh, the sustainable infrastructure stuff is front and center in all of our minds. This afternoon, we're gonna talk a little bit about social sector. And what didn't happen this morning though in conversations with folks organizing this, they're like, oh, it would have been great had we actually had people say or step up and raise their hand and be like, I'll fund that. So what I was thinking of doing is the following. So I grew up in a small little town in Ohio called Kidron. It's a big Amish Mennonite mecca, if you will, and my father was a Mennonite preacher. The first Amish bishop in the U.S. was my sixth great grandfather. I grew up Amish Mennonite, and this is the biggest livestock auction in the state. So I grew up bidding on goats and sheep, not cattle as much, eventually horses, and the auctioneer would be like, who can buy now, five now, five now, 10 now, who can give me now, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, and sold to the bidder over there, $20, $20, who can buy five, five? And so I was thinking, oh, maybe we could auction off some of the projects this afternoon. No, we're not, and I'm not gonna practice being an auctioneer because I'm not, but I did grow up being like the sheepish like bidder. Be like, yeah, I'll bid on that because my father had passed away a long time ago. So it's just me like in overalls, like bidding, like, yeah, I'll take it. It'll get me five and a half, five. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. I say that because when we think about funding this stuff and building public and political will, an auctioneer knows that you're more likely to bid on something if there's movement, if there's momentum, if there's excitement. The reason they go fast and the reason they make it flavorful and sing-songy and entertaining is because they know that you're more likely to raise your hand and bid on something that later you're like, I can't believe I bought that. Like I've definitely been to antique auctions with Amish furniture, beautiful stuff, and bought stuff that later I was like, mm, really didn't have the money, but the auctioneer was like, who gave me five and a half, five and a half, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. When it comes to sustainability, same thing. Like how do we build momentum, excitement around these projects so that the public is like, Yes, let's do it. And they understand from us, because we're messaging all the economic incentives, health incentives, security incentives for why we should pursue this. So that's some of the stuff I'm thinking about. I teach at NYU, so I'm constantly telling my students to think about this. I also run comms communications for the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance, which is a global nonprofit focused on net zero emissions, carbon neutrality, although I tell my cities never to use that language. Why? Because no public is like, what do we want? Net zero, when do we want it now? What do you to get excited about some of this stuff, we, used to ha we have to use the language that the public is using, and the public isn't using the language around net zero emissions, carbon neutrality. They are using the language around, what do we want? We want 100% renewable energy. When do we want it? We want it now. What do we want? We want zero waste going into the ocean. When do we want it? Now. No plastic straws going into the ocean. So when we think about the sustainability stuff and selling it to the public and to our policymakers, are we using language that they like? The Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance, if I could rename my organization, I would, because carbon neutrality just isn't used by the general public. It's used by us internally, net zero emissions, us internally, but not by the public. So we have to think about that too. I want to thank the DESA crew and Daniel Platts and Krishnan Sharma for organizing this and put a ton of work into this. So I'm thrilled to focus on St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Egypt. We got, their, we got the Minister of Planning from St. Vincent and Grenadines here, and we've got representation, thank you so much for stepping in, uh, to talk from Egypt's uh, also Ministry of Planning. So we're thrilled to have that, and then we'll turn it over to some investment types to give some feedback, hopefully Q&A all throughout, and hopefully I'll be your caffeine. So let's get ready, let's engage, and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Ms. Nada Masood. 
Representing the Ministry of Planning from Egypt, yeah. floor is yours. Thank you very much, Michael, uh, and thank you for the very exciting and energetic uh, introduction that you made. And I perfectly agree with what you said. We need to sell to the public the importance of sustainable development with its three dimensions. I mean, the economic, the environmental, and the social dimension. But it's challenging. I mean, doing this is challenging, especially in developing countries. We have the challenge of the costs associated with changing policies and, and introducing new policies. We have the challenge of changing individual behaviors and attitudes attitudes regarding uh, waste management, spending behaviors, uh, and the resistance to, to changing behavioral patterns. And we have the widespread poverty and inequality that is usually tackled through a one-dimensional policy, not a multi-dimensional comprehensive approach. So we do have challenges in this, yet we are very focused and, and determined on achieving sustainable development, and we think it's very crucial for us in all forms. And to do this,